Hello everyone. Welcome to our CAD 29 VARC Verbal Ability and Reading Comprehension Preparation Made Easy course. This is the course introduction video. This course is brought to you by Learning Made Easy team, a team of IIM grads in association with our e-learning partner GT Cube Get to the Top. If you are watching this video in the YouTube channel, do check out our full length course available for free at gtcube.com slash store where you will get to watch these videos as part of a course and also get to practice a lot of questions that will enhance your understanding. So let's get started. If you have not watched our CAD diagnostic course where we have discussed, analyzed the previous year's papers, pattern and have given you a diagnostic test which helps you to look at your current level and also plan a proper study plan so that you can ace your CAT exam, do check out that course that would really help you, immensely help you irrespective of how experienced you are in taking CAT exam. If not the earlier videos, at least the video which talks about the latest pattern and the diagnostic test with some good steady preparation tips, that would be a helpful part. We have discussed this in depth in that video. So the logic, the idea that we need to, or we want to derive in this part is this. Last two years, the CAD paper is relatively looking easier on the VARC out of all the sections. If you see out of 1 or 2 marks, the expected score to get 99 is around 74, 75 that is approximately 75 percentage of the marks. 90 percentile is expecting you to have around 55 percentage maybe and this 80 percentile is looking at 45 percentile. Right? So this is what we are expecting. As the based on the recent pattern based on the difficulty being the same so let's keep this in mind and go ahead and look at how to prepare and as we have discussed the most of the questions are coming from reading comprehension 24 questions out of 34 four para jumbles three paragraph summary and three para jumbles with the odd one out that is the split of 34 questions which we have written in all the three years the pattern has been the same so we should be able to do well in the reading comprehension along with others but this is like the most important section because it has 70 percentage of the questions keeping these two key points in mind right let's get some perspective right how to take the exam how to plan my strategy if i've sorted out my percentile target how to go about it to crack it and get a good percentile in the exam so let's talk about 99 percentile case uh, I need to get around 75 percentage of marks that's basically expecting me to get 26 to 27 correct attempts. If I attempt all 34 questions, a good accuracy according to me is 80 percent. Right? If you attempt 10 questions getting 8 of them correct with 2 of them wrong is really a good uh, accuracy. It's not that easy to get to 90, 100 percentage. It's ideally good but I would say 70 to 80 is really a good percentage of accuracy to have. So if I attempt all 34 questions with 80% accuracy, that will come out to be approximately 27.2 being correct, which is exactly what you need to get correct with respect to the final percentile, right? Maybe you leave a couple of questions you can do with 26 also being correct. If I attempt only 32, 31, if I get 26, 27 correct, that is still good. But yeah, keeping this in mind, you have to attempt almost all the questions in the VARC section if your target is 99 percentile. One to two questions I can understand you are not confident no merit in attempting them uh, for the negative marks if they are negative marks. Other than that you should be ideally attempting almost all the questions. That means we are getting to see five RCs 24 questions what I will split is like around 45 minutes for this RCs, 15 minutes for the verbal ability questions, the 10 questions on VA. You should be able to read what is the word, uh, average words that we get to see in RCs around 500 to 600 nowadays. So I should be able to read, per RC I am getting almost 9 minutes to read the passage of 500 600 words and also attempt four to five questions each which means you ideally have to read into two minutes three minutes start attending the question and you know complete it in a minute for each question and for this you have almost one and a half minute to attempt each question 
and you have to read the simple passages and sort of para jumbles will take a bit of time especially with no clues because you don't have options uh, but yeah keeping that in mind you see it's very very tight packed you have to be quick in reading you have to comprehend stuff well and attempt most of them and get them right as well keeping this in mind let's say you're looking at 90 percentile that means you have to get around 55 percentage of the marks right and that is basically getting around 20 of them being correct 20 to 21 being correct so that still requires you to attempt maybe 25 questions with 80 percent accuracy is what i'm still talking about out of 34 you get 25 questions to attempt here you have a little bit breathing space maybe you can do with three to four rcs right that means i attempt around maybe 18 to 20 questions and i do maybe six to seven va questions that will give me around 25 to 27 attempts and I have to get almost, if I attempt 20, I need to get 16 of them correct here and 4 to 5 out of them correct here. You still see, this is a doable, like I get maybe 12 to 13 minutes for each RC and I get maybe 2 minutes for VA depending on your strengths and stuff. So you have to understand whatever it is, you have to read stuff fast, you have to attempt most number of questions in VA RC, unlike the DILR or quant where the number of attempts can be relatively lesser. But VARC, you have to attempt most of them you, and you have to be very quick in reading, comprehending stuff and selecting the right answer. Here it's not about solving the questions, it's more about getting a sense of what's being talked about and you know, mark the correct answer. Which is, is something that you can build through practice rather than building the skills per se. Fundamentally, you have to be good at reading uh, English material of diverse areas. You have to have a good vocabulary that would help you to comprehend stuff better and quicker. And you should also have that logical comprehension connecting the right uh, set of things to infer the right set of statements. Just because they said something, you might not infer in the right way. You also have to build that logical ability to connect the right dots and infer the right things. Right. So overall, what I'm trying to say is this. Uh, you need to have the judgment to leave certain questions irrespective of what percentile you are looking at. Especially if you are someone who is looking at 90 percentile, 95 percentile. You need to build a judgment of which RC should I leave or which question should I leave. Right? There is no point in leaving the entire RC if you have already read 2 minutes and you are not able to solve 1 or 2 questions. How do I select which RC should I leave? Should it be because the RC is difficult to read or should it be because the questions are too difficult? On average, Specific detail based questions or fact based questions are always easy to answer irrespective of how difficult RC is to be read. But inferential questions are always the complicated things. You have to understand what are your strong areas and what are weak areas. RC as a whole cannot be your strong area. That is, I mean, our weak area when I say this. You have to have a, an understanding about yourself a level, a couple of levels below that. That is, I am good at inferential questions. I am relatively weak at uh, tone based questions. If I see a question like tone based, I'll just give a shot for some seconds and I'm not sure I'll leave that question because I'm not strong at it. I've been looking at my performance in the mocks and other areas. So I will not touch that. Right? I am good at specific detail based question and this RC has almost all the specific detail questions. Even though the RC looks a bit difficult to read, I'll go ahead and do it because I know I can do those questions. I am weak at inferential questions and this RC has most of them from that type. So maybe it's good for me to leave this RC because that could get tricky and I might get most of them wrong. You know, these things you have to be able to judge and build in your mind. You have to take mocks, you have to split the questions, I mean types of questions and get an understanding of where you're good at and where you're not good at. Just saying that I'm weak in RC is a very bad interpretation about your skill. Look, deep dive and understand which exactly are your pain areas so that you can work on them and improve as well as when you get to the close the D day, you understand which type of question should I leave. Right? The judgment of leaving those right questions is the best thing you can do. Not randomly attempting some RCs just because I've decided to attempt four RCs, I will leave the fifth RC in the sequence. The cat order is not the deciding factor. It should not decide which RC should you leave. You should decide which RC should I leave. 
so please keep that in mind and judge build that judgment if i am leaving couple of verbability questions should it be because i am not comfortable with the para jumbles are para summary or the para jumbles odd one out and which type of it right all of these multiple factors should be already built in your mind so that you can see a question and judge should i attempt or not should i attempt the easier one should i attempt the difficult ones in this those things come through mocks having a knowledge on your uh, basic strengths and weaknesses which comes again by taking mocks and analyzing them not just taking the mocks analyzing them for that very reason we sort of this dissect all the rc questions into different topics that's uh, you can find them in our concept videos of rcs what's the advantage of knowing the type of rc questions and potential traps that are set in the answers so that you understand what are your strong areas what are your weak areas what are different type of rcs how i can leave certain because i am not good at them all of this judgment you can build if you have that conceptual understanding of classifying an rc classifying a question and also the answer option so that you can eliminate some wrong answer options that is what we have done uh, through all the concept videos in the reading comprehension and the verbal ability as well you need to build that judgment of what you are good at and what you are not good at just saying para summary is a problem for me is not going to be the answer you have to be very clear okay my accuracy is good in para summary in easy questions how do i judge if this question is easy or not you know that's something that you have to build and also the negative marks and stuff like para jumbles odd does not have negative mark you can enter one digit out of the five one two three four five and the probability of getting them right is 20 percent with no negative marks so you need to attempt it irrespective of whether you have time or not randomly just key in two 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 you might still get one of them correct which is going to decide your percentile like up to five or ten percentile change can happen depending on where your percentile lies right you have to be very smart in deciding and attempting those questions even if you are taking a guess right so how to prepare for the cat varc section right we always feel the skill building and practice phase are the two phases that you need to work on the first on the skill building if you have not watched uh, we have done an in-depth video in the cat introduction course where we have talked about all the basic things you need to do on how to prepare for the verbal ability dilr and quant with the different practice resources and study materials and other videos you can look at do check that out if you have not seen that so skill building phase we do have concept video six concept videos for the reading comprehension and verbal ability three concept videos talking about how to tackle this and verbal ability is more of practice than uh, concepts per se concepts are simply very basic things even if you see the reading comprehension the videos we have talked about the types of questions potential traps so that you can actually build that ability to eliminate the wrong options understanding what is the difference between the correct option and a wrong option and we have solved some rcs to give you how you should go about solving how your brain should think about solving them it's basically tuning your brain to read and interpret things and select the right answer not, not uh, like a quant or dilr where you need to more of a quant where you need to know the formulas no need to know the concepts so that you will be able to solve a particular question so the 150 practice questions would be at easy level so that you get you know used to solving rcs more of direct and more of easier questions than the real cat level but once you do these questions you should be at least clear of some basics to a good extent then you can start off the practice phase we do provide uh, previous years cat questions from 2000 year onwards in rcs and other uh, you see almost there are uh, 75 to 80 rcs from 2000 in cat till this year which would give you a lot of practice and the number of para jumbles is closer to 80 to 90 questions we don't see much of paragraph summary maybe 10 15 questions is what we see in the last cat years i mean last 20 years i would say we don't have papers for 2009 to 2016 leaving that aside maybe we'll have around 30 30 maybe 30 or odd questions of paragraph summary and we have almost zero para jumbles leaving the last two years so 2017 and 2018 papers will give you 16 sorry 12 para jumbles uh, odd one out that is what we have for practice but still you need to do this is a must do our cat previous questions yes the rcs have changed the types have changed the length has changed i understand i agree with that the type of questions have also a bit changed a few of the types have they've moved on from that but this is the best source to still practice 
On top of that, you'll also have the mock CAT questions. If you're taking any mocks which you've recommended, you will be you are recommended to take 20 to 30. So each uh, will have almost 24 questions each mock. So you'll be having 480 to 720 questions to practice from RC alone. On the whole, you will have around 1000 questions to practice all the topics together if you've taken 30 mocks. Even if you have not taken the mock as a mock, at least practice those questions so that you get used to this particular uh, you know areas. These will be the ones which are closer to the actual CAT in the recent times. So don't miss that. Practicing almost 600 questions of old CAT questions and almost 800 to 1000 of CAT alone takes you plus the initial 250 which were provided will make you practice around 2000 questions which is a good practice for the CAT exam. We also have a course uh, that's also available for free RC beginners course. So we are providing 100 RCs to get you from a zero level to a considerably good level. We don't say that is sufficient for the CAT exam but to a good level. Uh, that would be a good start. So we've, seek, we've set the RCs in such a way that they start from easier to slightly medium and the harder ones. right? And also diverse areas like literature, arts, technology so that you get a practice of reading diverse topics. Also different lengths and different types of questions and we have sorted the difficulty levels from easy to this. So this is a good course to look at where you can, you can find this at gtcube.com slash store in our partner's website. Do check that out. That would also help you to get a good practice. So thank you for watching this video. If you're watching this video on the YouTube channel, do check out our full length course gtcube.com slash store where you'll get to practice a lot of questions along with the videos and it's a full length course that would be sufficient to a good extent uh, for your CAD preparation. It's good to have more practice, more uh, number of questions to be solved, but this will be definitely a good uh, comprehensive course that will cover everything that you need to be knowing to prepare and take for the take CAT exam. Also like our partner's Facebook page, facebook.com slash gtcube3. We're coming up with a lot of content and you get all those updates available there. Thank you for watching this video and let's meet in the next video.